Thank you, uh, dear and respected friend. Thank you so much for your uh, kind uh, participation and presence. We welcome you uh, to attend this online lecture on Chitranjan with Refigure in our Swadhyay Sahchakra Chitranjan Memorial Lecture. It gives me uh, immense pleasure to welcome honorable speaker, Professor Meera Chakravarti, Madam, from Jain University, uh, Bengaluru. I welcome Professor Anand Kumar Giri from Madras Institute of Development Studies. Uh, I welcome Miniti Pradhanji, Dr. Devendra Tiwari, and all the respected participants, viewers, both on Zoom platform and Google Meet platform. Uh, let me give a brief introduction to our uh, Honorable Speaker, Professor Meera Chakravarti is a research faculty in Department of Cultural Studies, Jain University, Bangalore, India. Prior to this, uh, she was a professor in Bangalore University till 2009. She has been a member of Karnataka State Women's Commission, Bangalore. She was also a member of uh, Review Committee, University Grant Commission. Uh, her engagement has been uh, with philosophy, cultural studies, women's studies, social justice, and uh, translocation uh, projects. She has uh, translated uh, some award-winning uh, literary work of renowned author published by uh, Sahitya Academy. Her most uh, recent translated uh, work, uh, Bachana, is very significant. Uh, it's about poetry of marginalized and others. Uh, so thank you so much, Madam, for accepting our invitation uh, to Chitranjan Memorial Lecture Series. So let me give also a kind of brief, brief uh, introduction to uh, Professor Chitranjan Das. Professor Chitranjan Das is a creative seeker and transformative thinker and activist in our times who has written and worked on many aspects of human lives, be it education, philosophy, literature and integral human development and social transformation. Professor Das was born on 3rd October 1923 in Bhagalpur in the undivided uh, district of Kathak in Orissa, uh, India and left uh, his mortal body on January 16, 2011. Professor Das, to, uh, known to uh, many of his uh, friends, co-travelers and concerned publics at large in Orissa, and India as Chittabhai. Chittabhai has initiated many um, creative experiments. He founded Jivanan Vidyalaya School of Life in uh, Chemapunda in 1956. Uh, he was pioneer in integral education movement in Orissa and translated major works of uh, Sri Arvindo and Mother in Oriya. He uh, nurtured both uh, Agragami, Shikshanandan, and Navapallava creative efforts in education and tribal development in Orissa. He wrote and translated it on uh, more than 250 books, a majority of them being in Oriya and some of these in, in English. Uh, so now it's time to invite the uh, moderator of today's session, Professor Anand Kumar Girisa, to kindly moderate today's session. Please unmute yourself. Uh, 
Hello, sorry, I had a network problem, but I think we are moving on to welcome Professor Mira Chakrabarti. So, looking forward to listening to her. I got dis disconnected for a few minutes. Okay, Mira Chakrabarti, madam, please deliver your talk. You are godly invited. Okay. Thank you, Ananda, and uh, thank you, Andeen, and uh, your team, just be doing a laudable work. Uh, today, uh, I would put a caveat first that uh, uh, with very limited material uh, that was uh, available to me, I tried to have a, a kind of a <coughs> reflection on that. And besides, I do not know Korea language, so I actually could not go to the resources which are uh, which are there in Oriya language. Mm, so with this, uh, I would uh, rather uh, um, uh, humbly submit that this is a very uh, a limited exploration that I have taken into. But nevertheless, let us uh, see what we uh, would make use of this. Now, reflecting on uh, Chitranjan's work uh, makes me feel as if a uh, world of faith is uh, reconfigured, especially now when the turmoil created by the virus around the globe seems difficult to alleviate all sorts of miseries humanity is facing. Um, am I clear? Ca can you hear properly? Yes, ma'am. You are clear. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> His works make uh, a signal contribution to our uh, understanding of how a vision that helps in understanding the larger landscape in aesthetics and philosophy, uh, in, in education, and in other disciplines, uh, which may provide penetrating insights into the dynamics of the diversities that shed light on the sub subject uh, in many areas. So while sketching a brief uh, profile of the importance of the concept of the perennial values as discussed by him, I have tried to uh, attempt a, a very limited exploration in this uh, paper. Uh, so uh, I would uh, say uh, how the inventive urge, he had that inventive urge uh, and what uh, led him the factors uh, referred to uh, above may appear to have made the evaluation of the competing theories complex, since they are not ir irrational in nature, but stages of inquiry into the literary development, which is rigorously pursued by uh, Chitaranjan. This is not a commonsensical view, but has a distinguished philosophical heritage associated most strongly with literary concepts. Uh, hence, it leaves us in no doubt that considering his voluminous and intellectual work, he would have been declared more than a genre writer. Uh, so Anantagirgiri mentions he might appear strange, but deceptively, uh, uh, so no one, one of his strangeness is to appear to be aggressively conventional. But one can see in him an inventive writer committed to finding a new theme and voice for each discipline or writing he does. Uh, that such a writer would then published in several genres, which explodes the uh, range and diversity of his work is not surprising. So in his uh, uh, compilation, uh, Giri has brought out regarding uh, Chitranjan, it appears that there is rather a distinct voice of a literary critic in Chitranjan, which is hard to dismiss. And at the same time, it's interesting to note that while adhering to a particular school of thought, he would occupy the Contested territories with caustic eloquence, published in many literary journals and published in his uh, native Oriya lecture. Uh, more importantly, his ideas help us to imagine and put into practice the creative paradigms to bring about a more just world. This is why his oeuvre would become a distinctive and thought provoking sight. It's indeed critical to note uh, that it is not impossible to implement something which is extraordinary, like uh, his idea of Jivana Vidyalaya, but that found formulating the possibilities are important concerns.
aspirations to freedom and identity to individuals. And this is what they, exactly the discourse that we could uh, engage genuinely. However, this involves a re reflection on the pre-colonized vision of a social culture structured by a system that expressed the ground reality without giving in to the pressure of power nexus of any kind. Hence, it is important to note how the pre-colonial system would possibly be considered as a critique of extreme materialistic approach that makes the colonial and the post-colonial systems of education. In the colonial context, Chitranjan is not able to find the education system as an attempt for an authentic identity of an individual, which is difficult to emerge in a society in which discrimination is the rule of the law. Besides the fact that the stereotype is not questioned, makes individuals live in a slumber from which he or she cannot possibly wake up unless pushed out by force. On the other hand, if one attempts to reject this stereotype system, he or she will be alienated from the rest of the community. While drawing his attention to the time when convention was the fashion, Chitranjan's literary adventure appears to have moved towards a discourse and was at forefront of the neoconservative movement that viewed actual experiment as an imperative. Giri mentions how upon return from Denmark, he started a school in an interior area of Odisha at Champatimunda in the district of Anubol, which was an effort to bring together Gandhi's Naitalim, that is basic education, and insights from the Danish folk high school movement. He was there in Denmark for four years, and whatever he wrote there for students have been published as Jivanabhidaloi, which means the school of life, and Jangolochichi. Its translation in English has, uh, has been pu uh, published by National Book Trust, uh, um, Book Trust Delhi. Chitranjan believed that instead of paying lip service to theories, it would be challenging to create a constructive change that would pave way for a, uh, a counter move, for a counter move that may be cause for bringing a transformation in society because the notion of formal experimentation then becomes an act of resistance and gets justified. Long acclaimed for his use of knowledge of myth, history, linguistics, and other disciplines, Chitaranjan has spent years writing and publishing for which he has been widely recognized. Especially for the poets and writers of the younger generation, he has been a master craftsman as far as texture and sensibility are concerned. He appears to talk to people in, in poems, he hears the person and finds inspiration and meaning in these conversations, which are both inventive and rescue of words for him. It's both a challenge and a constant reminder, he thinks, of the elements of poetry, which is indeed a craft, aesthetically making some, something out of language. He can turn casual conversation into investigations of any literary theory or thesis until he's satisfied. This is exemplary in the context of Jivanavidyaloy movement. One may see how many, uh, how on many occasions he has written and talked about the irony, reverence, and rebellion the movement carried with it, and how it had aimed to be liberating, enfeebling the culture of mainstream. He has continuously warned about how often the claim of mainstream culture could be useless when it comes to constructing anything to replace what it destroyed and implied through his work how it is possible to see that many a time the destruction itself could be under. In this con context, it is important to see how his experiment was received by the concerned government. As Giri explains, Chitranjit did not want this school to be part of the governmental school system and wanted an autonomous process of evaluation for its students rather than being forced to take part in the government board examination. Initially, the government had promised Jibonavidyaloy autonomy, but with the change of the ruling power, the education department uh, of, of Orisha backtracked. Chitaranjan resigned from the school and came back to his village." Unquote. The bizarre world of, of the stereotype. The stereotype system of education must have appeared regrettable to Chitranjan since 
education is not just a process, but as also as an act that is aesthetically inspired. And to show that it is translatable, Chitrangit must demonstrate how the prevalent and deceptive system makes muddled attempts to be in a stereotype structure, allowing it to remain as a resort for the mindless rec recording of the documents because we are familiar how the politics of this stereotype works in our societies. We see how it leads to the poverty of creative imagination and how it makes people the fodder for the run of the mill institutions that would never challenge stagnation, both in thought process and in action. Hence, in this context, it is evident to note that Chitranjan wanted a unique system of education that would be an antithesis to the presumptive system of education that is still prevalent. Prior to him, Tagore had done the experiment with his school uh, education, hoping it that was unable to restore the ability to imaginative skills regarding which he himself had terrible experiences of confinement to the systemic oppression when he was attending school as a student. Even as a young boy, he was confided at home, and hence it seems he had been nurturing a strong emancipatory desire, as he explained how he felt when forbidden to go out of the house. Quoting Tagore, going out of the house was forbidden to us. In fact, we didn't even, even the freedom of all its rooms. So we peeped at nature behind barriers. The limitless thing called the outside was beyond my reach. Flashes and sounds and scents of which used to come momentarily and touch me through its interstices. With so many gestures, it seemed to want to play with me through the bars, but it was free and I was bound and there was no way of meeting. So the attraction was all stronger, unquote. This impressive dynamism of his creativity brings out the most relevant observation to reconnect with nature through various identities, which could only deepen our relationship with the spiritual source that appear to manifest through these connections. Tago tells us how he made attempts to be with nature whenever he could get rid of boredom of the stereotype routines of classes thrust upon him to make him learn it and how amazingly he had a unique experience that changed his outlook deeply. Quote, I still remember the first magic touch of literature, which I experienced when I was a child and was made to struggle across my lesson. The morning hour appeared to me like a mere, mere more illumined page grown dusty and faded, discolored into irrelevant marks, smudges and gaps Worrisome in moth moth eaten meaninglessness. Suddenly I came to a sentence of combined words, which may be translated thus quote, it rains, the leaves tremble. In Bengali, Jol Pore Patanori. This was his first ex expression of poem. Quote, At once I came to a world in which I recovered my full meaning. I was no longer a mere student with his mind muffled by my spelling lesson enclosed by classroom walls, but one who suddenly realized for himself the unobstructed perspective in which the division between the subject and the object vanished in a large harmony of existence." Unquote. Marking this as a, dis as a distinct joy, Tagore reaffirms his rescue from an endless grayness of obscurity from the ennui, which is desert hairs of inactive imagination. Chitranjan appears to have been aware of this reflection by Tagore and believed that he had to go for an exceptional school for students that would not impose this stereotyped education on them. Hence the importance of the thought of the Jivanavidaloy that was aimed to explore the uniqueness in students which would allow them to be creative and for which he was the foundational figure. figure. Hence, a new con configuration. And uh, as an undergraduate, he writes a thesis at Shantiniketan in 1948. And in this thesis, Chitranjan mentions that, quote, rejection reduces man to chrysalis cave of Dionysian type of individualism. 
politically to his own interested group and morals to his own pet dogmas. Now, this, uh, by not drawing a line between assimilation and acceptance, he implies how creativity can possibly uncover the ne neglected histories of human existences and how it is further possible to bring in important interventions. This could possibly be seen as an important perception that emerged from his involvement in the uneven ground by which it becomes possible to explore the conjunctions and disjunctions both in literary world and in the empirical world. The pressure of violent and nightmarish attitude of the state, its complacency, its complacency and apathy towards people compelled him to rebel against systemic oppression habituated to maintaining and perpetuating itself. Unable to contain its own satirical energy, it went all over the place like a spinning wheel, clearly showing that this perspective would approach the crisis as a chance for a new beginning and focus especially on the marginalized while understanding the crucial factors about the state that need comprehension, the complexities of political power, and why decisions regarding people's rights are often difficult to achieve and fiction that sustain political interactions. These are as important as they are significant to our theorizing. This perception could be viewed not just as an instrument in pursuit of a better life for those who are living on the edge, but as a competitive struggle for food, water, shelter, and human rights. By raising the issue of social responsibility, Chitrangan felt that this significant approach could, may, uh, could take people on a fascinating journey and demonstrated not only the failures and false promises made by the stereotype system of the state, but also its refusal to perceive the problem itself. Moreover, even if this approach becomes a so-called failure, its success is bound to become a reality at some point in future, as he felt he, it could suddenly and unexpectedly throw establishment into an unpleasant situation when it would be compelled to be rested upon constraint. However, this actually happened when inspired by the great Gandhian thinker and socialist activist Jayaprakash Narayan, the students' movement in Bihar rebelled against the ruling government known for its misrule and corruption in 1974. It was called Sampurna Kranti, total revolution, and also as JP movement. Chitranjan must have been aware of this, and he must also have been a witness to this dynamic attempt that was made to shake the establishment since the challenges, he challenges us to be angry with oppressive systems and relationship as they exist. In his collection of essays, Brahma Tatila Nipara, the Brahma has hidden up, he continues to express luminous anger at current indignities of life and society. And anger we find in fellow writers, as Giri mentions, you are Anantamurti, Mahashweta Devi, etc. At the same time, while expressing anger, Chitranjan sometimes used harsh words and comments. And on, on, on others, which was an expression of his uh, ego rather than his seeking religious higher life. This created unease, anger, and misunderstanding within some. Though Chitranjan thought that in so doing, he is, uh, he is doing the work of Socratic Gadfly and offering critic as a friend, uh, say, quotes Giri. Unquote. Chitranjan finds this alternative juxtaposed to the mainstream system of education uh, system as the possible route and as the way towards the towards the new configuration of faith. The orientations for alternate ideas, for instance, in education in early India through self-exploration, generally supervised by the teacher, led to a relationality that could forge new connections. This was extremely significant because then the relation of Bhumi, uh, the material, and the Bhuma, the transcendental, could be adequately represented. Bhumi is the world and Bhuma is the transcendental reality. It's interesting to see how Chitranjan was alert about things happening around young people 
he would have his own diagnosis to be able to reach at the root cause because it was necessary. He must have felt to bring in the youth energy to the process of integration into the project of alternative perspective that awakens them to the possibility of understanding knowledge outside the regulations of the system. This reminds us of the poet and author Paul Goodman, whose humorous and piercing comments could negotiate the interstices between the powerlessness and power. In one of his writings, he says, quote, during Eisenhower's second administration, I wrote a book describing how hard it was for young people to grow up in the corporate institutions of American society. Yet, statistics at that time indicated that most were content to be secure as personnel of big corporations. A few deviated in impractical and certainly unpolitical ways, like being beat or delinquent. The system itself, like its president, operated with a cheerful and righteous self-satisfaction. There were no signs of its being vulnerable, though a loud chorus of intellectual critics like myself were sounding off against it. We were spoil sports, unquote. This state of affairs, which imposes a certain kind of regulation that makes people passive, was resisted by Chitranyan all the more because people in turn desire to remain in the same establishment without realizing what harm is being caused. Goodman further emphasizes how the system of education in America behaves typically without perhaps even uh, being aware of how deep the mass he calls miseducation is. Quote, Washington has all allotted several billions of dollars to the schools. The schools are not teaching very well but there is no chance that anybody will upset the apple cart and ask if so much doing of lessons is the right way to educate the young altogether. Rather, there is a demand for new methods and mechanical equipment, which will disturb nobody. And electronics is the latest thing that every, every forward looking local school board must be proud to buy. So to cut it on this melon, Electronics corporations, IBM, Xerox, etc., have hastened to combine with or take over textbook houses. Unquote. To Chitranyan, this kind of system, was discuss as discussed above, might have posed not only social and ethical questions, but also a philosophical question of existence, with which it appears as if he was supposed to have explored, explored the concept of freedom within the matrix of Indian cultural discourse. This becomes clear when his in-depth reflections on these questions allowed him to respond to them in an unconventional way, the result of which was the Jivanovidaloy. And that, that was a new framework intended to bring in results, unlike the results of the conventional system that were predetermined. Being aware of the cultural environment of the early India, which may, when many of the members of the younger generation could receive an orientation that could structure their self-identity, Chitranjan made attempts to mobilize the images of freedom that would liberate pupils from the corrosive forces of the cog in the wheel that generally propels the system. He was very appreciative of Tagore, who could illuminate a, lib a liberatory image in, his, in this direction when he says, Tagore's life provides an interesting ground for studying the growth and maturation of a great person. The gradual ripening of the first emotive years in, in, into those of a more complete realization, not by any ulterior strain and stress, but through uh, creative spontaneity. In, it, it happens only to him who knows how to keep his uh, uh, portals open to the invisible, yet formative, well, a world of values and nuances. Tagore's life appears to us as an ascending spiral, a necklace where one bead does not just repeat the other, but it fulfills the other. It's quoted in Giri's uh, book. What is important in this situation is to explore alternative to the system which becomes counterproductive 
and through the alternative bring the existentiality of the subject to build in a critical consciousness. The tragedy of not complying with the systematic stereotypes is consequential, no doubt. But what is more tragic is that the idea behind the non-compliance does not even get registered in the minds of those running the system. Goodman enlightens on this sort of distortion when he says, quote, a frank look shows, I think, for the most, the long schooling is a way of keeping the young on ice. The job training is busy work, and the social services turn people into community dependents or generations. Much of the anxiety about the handicapped and the underprivileged sub, uh, uh, suburban uh, squeamishness that cannot tolerate difference. What is never done, however, is to change the rules of the system to redefine usefulness in terms of how people are and to shape the dominant style to people. This cannot be done because it would be inefficient and indeed degrading for there is only one right way to exist. Do it our way or else you are not quite a person." Unquote. Now, this view of Goodman reinforces the idea that it is the relationality that would pave the new way because this process would facilitate the growth of an individual bringing her or him to the center of activities while not getting entangled with the stereotype system. The relationship between different approaches and the institutions which follow those approaches would create a space which would emerge from intercooperation and not from coercion. However, it is important to note how we can get out of the stereotype system that is maybe controlled by bureaucracy or maybe any closed door system because, quote, Wintrop says, they have a central flaw, which is that if they are not shaken up periodically, they try, they tend to ossify. This is what happens in private firms. They need to be shaken up periodically via some sort of takeover. It happens to the bureaucracy of democratic governments, which need to be shaken up by the election of a new principal party, unquote. In view of the above, we have to take note of the fact that Tagore's effort towards a school during the colonial rule appears to be also an effort towards an aesthetic project translated as the school known as Shantiniketan Vidyalaya. Tagore being a poet himself could link this imperative to form a countermeasure against the colonial materialistic extremes by bringing in the ancient concept of Gurukula. Uh, which can perhaps be today's terms residential school, but this is different. That can structure the relationship between the individual and nature in many ways because preserving a relative autonomy that would have to be used with responsibility. In this context, Tagore observes, quote, the object of education is to give man the unity of truth. Formerly when life was simple, all the different elements of man were in complete harmony. But when there came the separation of intellect from the spiritual and the physical, the school education put entire emphasis on the intellect, on the physical side of man. We devote our sole attention to giving children information, not knowing that by this emphasis, we are accentuating a break between the intellectual, the physical, and the spiritual life." Unquote. This was one way of attempting, attempting anti-colonial struggle, preventing the young students from reaching linear thinking of the stereotype system of education that was imposed by the schools in the name of education, which was totally objectionable from the poet's uh, perspective. As he says, quote, what tortured me in my school days was the fact that the school had not the completeness of the world. It was a special arrangement for giving lessons. What is important to consider here is that this materialist approach was never objected by the political thinkers in the post-colonial establishment in India. It had thrown overboard the idea and practice advocated by Tagore, lock, stock, and barrel in the enthusiasm to join a new era of education. So it is an aesthetic project with reference to the above 
we may observe that in the absence of a sustained critique of extreme materialism and also of unpredictable political pers perspectives, it's difficult to challenge this stereotyped system, which so far has taken a considerable toll of young lives. Chitranjan must have felt how Tagore's aesthetic perspective is to be woven into the fundamentals of a renewed vision as it is of immense importance to the con concept of freedom. Because as long as the notion of departmentalization in the system remains prevalent, the understanding of the interconnection between nature and information becomes impossible. And so knowledge will not remain inspired. Because an aesthetic perspective will equally remain outside the fundamentals and consequently cannot remain connected to the idea of freedom. In this context, Tagore seems to clarify, quote, society has made its own arrangements for manipulating men, men's minds to fit for uh, fit its special pattern. These arrangements are so closely organized that it is difficult to fi find gaps through which to bring in nature. There's a ser serial adjustment of penalties which follows to the end one who ventures to take liberty with some part of the arrangements, even to save his soul. Therefore, it's one thing to realize truth and another to bring it into practice where the uh, whole current of prevailing system goes against you, unquote. This also implies a certain kind of institutionalization that creeps in the stereotype system since the regimentation is latent in the system that is imposed on students to make them fall in line and not following the pattern result and not following the pattern results in punishment as expressed by Tagore. It's interesting to note how the Buddha, through his own life lived experiences, asked his disciple Ananda to, to be his own guide traversing his life's journey. Quote, now I am frail, Ananda, old, aged, far gone in years. This is my 80th year, and I my, my life is spent. Even as an old cart, Ananda is held together with much difficulty, so the body of Tathagata is kept going only with supports. It is Ananda only when the Tathagata disregarding the external objects with the cessation of certain feelings attains to and abides in the signless concentration of mind that his body is more comfortable. Therefore, Ananda, be islands unto yourselves, refuges unto yourselves, seeking no external refuge with the Dhamma as your refuge, seeking no other refuge, Ananda, unquote. The possibility of an un unstereotyped approach can always emerge from people's own experiences as Buddha sh showed and guided by his her conscience as, as he reiterated, while addressing people and the monks equally. Not stereotyping the mind is imperative as it helps in understanding that there is freedom to set things supposed to be fixed and to look for changes to go forward. In this context, it is necessary to reflect also how Gandhi, a prote uh, Gandhi's protest to a stereotyped oppressive administration takes the form of resistance through Satyagraha, in which people join together, pointing to the conviction that as a society, we ought not to lose the means to talk about your, our liberty and need always to be vigilant about it. It suggests further that political, uh, politically responsible uh, subject that the question of people's uh, political resistance and ethics cannot only turn their, on their possibility to conceive of agency, but also on where such resistance and ethics are to be located. However, the core of this action, the, sorry, the core of this action lies the spirit of liberty which cannot be lawlessness of the anarchic French or the right to be cussedly, blood-mindedly oneself of the English, comments Teddy Galton. But should keep up a wary eye on the potential insolence of power. We may recall at the World Summit of Legislatures 2014 in Mexico City, 
Rachel Kai, the vice president and special envoy for climate change at the World Bank Group, said that the fields vital think beyond GDP. In a recent interview, she said that we need to expand the community of leaders who understand need for action now. You can create jobs for your citizens and at the same time decarbonize the economy. Green growth is possible. From China to Chile and Mexico, steps are being taken to achieve this through public initiatives, legislation, and business involvement. Unquote. It's interesting to note how the undercover boss, there used to be a, a, a in the British movie, a British television a, a, a channel, which was called Undercover Boss, which shows depicts a person who has a high management position at a major business deciding to become undercover as an entry-level employee to discover the faults in the company. It showed that the boss ultimately took a radical stand to see and explore how his staff and people who use his company's product are faring. Hence, what is amazing is that even amidst terrible disadvantages, there are still people and their ideas that take hold that social justice necessarily involves civil association and that it is not just about blowing all the strength to those who do not deserve favoring them around the purpose of their own people. People like Indrani Medhi, Medhi's work, is an example in this context. A Bangalore-based Microsoft researcher, Indrani's work has potentials to help the public sphere in a big, in, in a big way. For her work, she was figured in Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She has developed the technology reports, I mean, the institute reports. She has developed graphics and multimedia based user interfaces for computers to make them accessible to millions of people who cannot read or write, which is going to make people more autonomous. Non literate people use their mobile like landlines to make calls and miss out on most features of their devices. So she says if they have to call again a contact, they have just dialed. They have to punch the numbers all over again. Her user interface eliminates text, but uses Arabic numerals, as even non-literate are familiar with them. So in view of these above discussions, we may note how different ways of creating interventions can be bring in a transformation to the system. It also points out that perhaps some sort of interventions, which Chitranjan had conceived in his time, toward the realization of his critical project on education must have focused on how these stereotype approaches fail to orient new challenges to deal with the problems of education and its aesthetics and how through creativity new dynamics can emerge to reconfigure a new faith in, in de uh, to deal critically with the system. Hence, it is equally significant to see how his journey to different places facilitated a new kind of awareness in him and that it was not just a journey in some places, but a journey of conscious perception to see through the limitations and were necessary to overcome while simultaneously attempting to search for a counterpoint and a critic that would act as uh, transformative discourses. This search for our ambition comes from the collective heritage of a culture and aesthetics and must be used to derive a critical subjectivity, as it is important, uh, it is an important paradigm, even in modern context of interdisciplinary studies, to go beyond the conventional boundaries. It's also important to see, we raise questions to seek an inspiration, to seek an interplay of many dynamics that may help us to abandon the stereotype system in favor of understanding the dialectical relationship a concern that needs yet another write-up to impress upon the seekers of alternate paradigms. Chitranjan was aware of the fact that followers of the stereotyped system generally believed that alternate ideas and paradigms are mostly designated by nincompoops and that the radical ideas are perceived as irrelevant. But he knew intuitively that a path of difference, a new creation could only carve a path of deep-rooted transformation. And towards this goal, he worked relentlessly, demonstrating that even alienation could not stop him from his own onward journey. It is this journey 
which is extremely significant. Whether the destinations could be reached or not may not be the criteria for any access. Thank you very much. It's complete. Thank you so much, madam. I think uh, Professor Giri's connection is not uh, good. So thank you so much for uh, an excellent deliberation and very insightful deliberation. So I can see uh, the comment of Professor Gyan Gului. So first, I would like to invite him. Professor Gyan Gului. Yes, I am here. Excuse yes, me. please. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was uh, really very interesting, and I took some notices. Uh, well, I would say when I read uh, Chitabai, I have the impression that he that there is a, a deep layer in his thought, which is, in my opinion, something like the aim to reconstruct, to construct and to reconstruct uh, the aspect of the education, which is not only education in schools, it is education in general, education of thought, uh, since uh, due to the, uh, of course, negative effects of, uh, of colonialism and of the British domination, I have the impression that Chitabai says there has been, has taken place something like uh, the opposite of the model of Tagore, because Tagore says in one of the quotations of Chitabai that men are many, but man is one, and that the education should uh, bring, lead the men to, to think themselves and of themselves as a unity. And Chitabai, in his meditation, many times reflects that both the colonialism from outside, that is, the English colonialism has brought uh, the tendency to lock down uh, mm, upon other other about about the people who are not so uh, in the upper society and has produced so to speak a situation in which there is a new form of colonialism from inside that is the upper classes through speaking for instance through having the uh, the main part of the education in english tend to differentiate and to separate themselves from the lower classes on the one side. This is, in my opinion, evident in Chitabai's meditation, both on the use of English as a form of education and in the form of the prevalence given by the upper classes, at least by some parts of the upper classes in India, to the Sanskrit language uh, to the disadvantage of the other form of languages, like, for instance, Odia. This, he says many times, Sanskrit is the language of culture, and all other languages, specifically Odia, has uh, been treated as an inferior form of civilization, of language, and of culture. That is, this is really the opposite uh, in comparison and in relation to what Chitabai seems to have found in Tagore, that is that the most important thing to be remembered in the construction of a society and of a system of education, the formation of the whole individual, is that men are many, of course, because there are ma very many individuals, but man is one. And it seems that I have the impression that Chitabai says we have lost this sense of unity, unity underlying the genus of the of the individuals. And therefore I would say to I would speak of an attempt at real reconstruction 
of, of the layer of culture and of mentality and of mind, which has been lost due to the English domination, which is, has remained, in my opinion, in Chittabais, in the mind of the people. That is, he's saying, um, we should be careful we how to be careful colonialism is not only a problem of an external domination which is here colonialism can remain also when the, uh, the, the external domination has gone away that is it is a question of of the mind and therefore we need a reconstruction of our educational system many times um, Chitabai insists on the fact that in the educational system, the pupils, for instance, should not be separated from each other, that the individuals should not be separated from each other, and that the, the sense of the inner unity of the individuals has to be taken again, taken back, and taken in in the system of education. This is the point which, uh, for me at least, is most impressive when uh, I see Chitabai quoting, for instance, and meditating on Tagore, and quoting and meditating on the problems which colonialism has, uh, has left, so the, or in spite of the end of colonialism, in the minds of, of, um, of the people. So thank you very much. Thank you. It was really very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gyan Gului. As always, you put uh, a very, very important uh, question, and I would like to respond, uh, uh, Professor Honorable Speaker, at the end. Uh, so now I can see some name also here. Um, Marufsa, uh, Dr. Marufsa is from uh, Kashmir. Sir, please. Dr. Marusha is taking some time, so I would like to invite uh, Miniti. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my Mira, Professor Mira, ma'am, for uh, her very good, excellent deliberation. It has been a privilege to listen to her. Uh, actually, I have been fortunate enough to listen to her in many occasions. So what I like the thing, you know, the connection in the thought process between Tagore and uh, Chitranjan, uh, she was uh, just uh, describing. So as I have not uh, actually been access to so much of his audio books also, of late only English things and reading. So one thing I was just thinking uh, that... Uh, the autonomous process of the schooling in we all uh, want our um, education to be state sponsored or it should be you know to reach the masses to each and everyone things like this so i want to know how uh, the autonomous process and the state sponsor how it can be kept a balance and uh, how the chitwais thoughts um, can be reached to, to that very grassroots level of the society. That is one thing. And what we can do uh, to, you know, to reverse the stagnation process, uh, stagnation thought process. So, thank you. These two things I would like to know. Thank you, Miriti Pradhanji. Any other uh, participant? If he or she I would like any question to be asked. Please let me know in the chat box. Oh, perhaps. <clears throat> uh, so I have one query also. Uh, uh, Professor Mira Chakravarti, madam, first of all, thank you so much for a very, very insightful and thought provoking session. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, you just, uh, during your lecture, you uh, 
highlighted one point of uh, time of Indian history, 1974. And uh, I just want to know, I, although I have gone through your work uh, while uh, 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 reading your biography, <coughs> uh, reading your biographical sketch, your very, uh, very important contribution uh, came into a form of a book called Dynamics of Descent. So I just want to understand the approach of descent, because at 1974, you know, that there was a time of uh, total revolution. How uh, uh, Professor uh, Das, uh, you know, approached the question of uh, corruption, you know, larger corruptions uh, or uh, deterioration of public morality in that sense. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, one question of about, you know, colonialism. Uh, of course, we must uh, differentiate and sometime I try to differentiate uh, um, a social reformer uh, with social revolutionary. There are some thinkers who are having very political engagement. They uh, treat, uh, you know, question of politics as supreme question. So I think the question of uh, uh, culture uh, is the supreme question for uh, Professor Das. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it is my just intellectual guess that uh, he did not uh, engage in um, more, you know, social um, of course, he engaged in social movement, but it was he was not engaged in political movements. You know, uh, you can see uh, at that time, at the time uh, when a Professor Das, uh, you know, experimented uh, uh, all these things. Uh, you know, at that time, usually in India, you know, uh, nationalism was a supreme question. So I never ever found uh, like. Uh, uh, Professor Das uh, engaged with the question of, uh, you know, hardcore nationalism in that sense. So, this is my concern. Yes, me, Mira, ma'am. Uh, uh, are you are you um, gathering many more questions, or shall I uh, say some? Yes, uh, please say something. Uh, okay. In the chat. Okay. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, uh, your question, Randi, about uh, of, of dissent, dynamics of dissent that you said brought the colonialism. <laughs> that from dissent comes also, uh, from the challenge or the, from the dissent also comes a transformation that uh, also should be uh, borne in mind, that should be noted. And uh, since they were almost contemporaries, uh, uh, J.P. Jayaprakash Narayan and uh, and and uh, Chitta Ranjan, uh, of course, he must have been uh, very uh, certainly uh, aware of these facts. What is important here is the uh, not taking into one because one leads to the other. It is the colonialism, violence destructuring uh, the whole uh, system, destructuring even men, even people, I wouldn't say men, even people's life, which uh, all these, uh, it has an effect, a serial effect which, which spreads. So therefore, I mentioned it as, his, as, as pre-colonial uh, education system. The pre-colonial education system, you find that, that the uh, pupil is uh, supposed to go to the uh, teacher's house and uh, the study happens in the midst of the nature. So what is Tagore also pointing out, which now come to G.I. Uh, uh, Gian Luigi, um, and also Minati, I will uh, combine it as, you cannot see them in piecemeal. You cannot see either Chitranjan or, or uh, Tagore in piecemeal. Tagore is not just an educationist, he is not, not just a poet, uh, both. It applies to both Chitranjan and, and uh, Tagore. They are not just educationists or just uh, uh, 
the, these are their aspects. These are the dimensions. You have to see them in, in their holistic uh, way that one is leading to the other. The effect of co colonial administration system where they are departmentalizing uh, life, they are departmentalizing education, and ultimately creating machines and not, I mean, they had declared they wanted babus. They had declared they, they wanted for their office certain employees. And they, they were clear about this. So Tagore is uh, uh, very, very, uh, his, his scrutiny or his insights are deeply uh, significant. He says we are refusing it because it is a counter thesis. This is counterproductive because we are not piecemeal as human beings. We are uh, in the larger, uh, we, we, we need freedom. We are a free human being. And we freedom comes from uh, with interactions with nature. It's spiritual. So you will have to bring the spiritual elements both. I mean, it is I'm, I'm, I'm combining both Chitranjan as well as, uh, uh, as, as, well as Tagore. They, they needed, uh, the, uh, they, or, they, or they had both the the intellectual the physical and the intel uh, and and the spiritual as as uh, as one whole and therefore it is uh, uh, not that the institution uh, jivan vidyalaya or institution shantiniketan is meant to, uh, uh, to to create them it is for these people what kind of education should go the institution doesn't come first first comes the people this is also pointed out by uh, by uh, by Goodman, which uh, said the rules are made to guide people. No, first you know what people, what student, what younger generation, or the pupils have talents. Make the rules for according to their talents. The talents should fit into that, and not rules has to fit into that. No. So this is this way of looking at it like. Uh, in in the colonial because they had a purpose they 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 wanted a profit they they had come for business and they stayed together now we we do not see education system in in that way so attracting students or uh, attracting youth for uh, learning or experiencing or uh, uh, having these uh, was not just just attracting students uh, uh, for that he didn't uh, make shantini ketan Shantini Ketan started with just three three people, three little boys, and one of them was Tagore's uh, son himself. So people refused to come to, because people refused to believe Tagore that he could really run the school uh, in, where he, creativity and freedom and imagination would get primary values. So when you say, Minati, about the about the autonomous education, what is autonomous? What is the autonomy? When you have the autonomy of thought, thinking, if you are not free in, in, in your thinking, then you cannot naturally see the consequences of your free thinking in, in your free action. So therefore, the freedom, these these are only, uh, to, today it is only autonomous, etc. These are only, uh, you know, constructs to uh, extract money. So I do not at all believe in them when they say this is an autonomous body and then I don't simply don't believe. But the spirit that the that the poet had said, both are poets, but spirit that Tagore and Tagore had influenced also Chitranjan, the spirit is that spirit of freedom, that a person becomes a human. Today, we are not human beings. We are, we are machines. We are just machinery, routinely follow something. And therefore, there is so much of internal uh, unpeace. There is no peace in mind because uh, there is no peace that I am following. I am just following a machine. I am following rules because they are, they are paying you some salary. So you will have to follow them. Whether you like it or not, you have to do that. So this is what is uh, uh, what was... Uh, kind of it. Uh, we should have the irreverence for this kind of a thing. The reverence comes from nature. That is why he went on saying that uh, that that the that, that the sunlight was coming through the bar, and he was inside the bar, but that nature was free outside. It was a beautiful uh, metaphor. Uh, not only metaphor. His experience that he said. He said he was bound, even even in in his days when. When it was not, uh, I mean, when it was uh, allowed that one could have, and he 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 did have, he did have. His father realized that 
this is not the way that he would uh, really learn in school. So there was a lot of homeschooling, which was also to an extent, uh, to an extent torture, but he still had some freedom. So therefore, he always used to tell the younger generation later on, he said, he's a runaway from school. That school, Palatok. Palatok is the one who's a runaway. He has run away from the school. And you will see that those who are imaginative do not confirm to the system. You see Tagore, you see Steve Jobs, you see Zuckerberg, these people, you see, you see a lot of others who are, who are school dropouts who do not go to schools conformity because their imagination doesn't is not welcome because it, and it gets stifled to that. so i think i will uh, rather say that you would not see him in a in a compartmentalized way as an educationist or as a uh, as, as a person who is running a school or an administrator he did that he did provide education he ran he ran the administration because he was in um, um, uh, 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 terribly, uh, 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 he didn't have enough money to even to pay to the school's uh, teachers. He had tough time, and he took and uh, he undertook lectures, went abroad, and lectures collected money for uh, for his uh, school. So not that Tagore has equally gone through a terrible pain. Both in mind, one one has to uh, just look into his letters to different people and he tried to collect money and then he was so all these to bring ultimately to bring humanity humanness to uh, so the system can never do that a system is always a regimentation therefore even in tagore schools children were allowed to go tagore says my i i left my uh, son to go to a a little uh, ravine or to a lake or to jump in the muddy water and i didn't buy, i knew my family members were uh, cursing me but he would uh, there would be some contagious disease or something but i i i just let him do what he wanted to do but that was because you just cannot compete with the creative freedom of a child and we always underestimate children we think that what we sit, sit, sit down you should sit down if you get up okay but the way they they hate it they hate it they do not so this happens to as much as it happens to a child it happens to a person a grown-up person also and being aware of what we do is we are not aware we just take it for granted or oh, this is autonomous this is free so we'll go what he did is that they did it with an awareness they try to bring an aesthetic dimension, uh, a philosophic, a cultural dimension to that. Hope, I said, uh, if you have any clarification, you can ask. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, Dr. Mahfuz sir ha has joined. So, Mahfuz sir, would you like to have any comment? Perhaps. Uh, yes, yes. Please, please, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I have some issue with the phone from my side. I'm sorry for that. So it was. Uh, namaste, 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 Maruf, Maruf, namaste, namaste. Namaste. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. So uh, many things cropped up. I was just wondering about your response to the problem which is faced by both Tagore and Chitranjan. Um, this is. Why didn't any of the experiments succeed to a good scale against the what we call school school system, which has now been homogenized across the world? The point is, despite all those criticisms, de-schooling society and all those and attempts here and there to start something alternative to this, even in the Muslim world elsewhere, but somehow we see see that it is not a success so what is and we know there have been very radical attempts against the whole idea of this universal literacy from Ananda Kumaraswamy and others but the point is today the next generation our own generation next generation we have no viable alternative an institutional alternative to current schooling which we know has all this so many problems and is complicit with the capitalism and all those 
things which we uh, normally point out and nowhere is separate at the center at what we call that metaphysics or what we the sacred which is so central to the indian ethos for example do you think gurukul or something like that is can be revived by these creative synthesis of tagore chitranjan and some other educationists what do you think we can work on this direction or we are just battling against the time i was just wondering about your response to this हाँ जी मारूफ साहब आप इतने नॉलेजेबल हैं कि आपको उत्तर भी जवाब भी मालूम है आप जी वो ही जैसे ही पूछ रहे हैं मुझे मालूम है आप अच्छा मैं खुशी की बात है लालन देर एंड बीन टू कश्मीर यूनिवर्सिटी एंड वेरी हैप्पी अबाउट लालन देर यू लर्न मोर देन दूशन you know if yeah. you if i go to the bowels of the west bengal and i learn more than than what i go to school yeah so this, yeah. this is the approach this is the approach and i uh, that's why i said you know the answer very well so uh, despite of this i I'll, i'll uh, say this yes yeah one is that uh, when tagore uh, started he started with just two three uh, boys because uh, the whole society didn't believe him but mm. then slowly he he per, he he uh, no, obstinately pursued his goal and he and later on you know it becomes a whole university and uh, the school and becomes a university uh, but he was not happy as to what, the way the uh, government had taken a uh, course of the university but what you should try to see here is that when when he was in charge of the of shanti niketan school he brought people like uh, like today we want you people like you have come i'm so happy jian luj has come ananta is doing some work randeer is raising questions now this uh, atmosphere of freedom uh, tagore pursued you will see people from japan from uh, uh, germany from uh, america from uh, england you know monin monin williams was there okakura was there Uh, and nibet uh, of course <coughs> mentions about the uh, paintings of yokakura and all that so he he brought as many uh, as many thinkers who uh, who was in the same wavelength and they were uh, you you have seen the um, the uh, jamini roys or the anand anandalal bose and uh, amartya sen's uh, uh, grandfather maternal grandfather kriti mohan sen so it was galaxy of of people there in shantiniketan and uh, can you imagine when these people speak to uh, students uh, they are not going to certainly follow a stereotype system so he did and i would say that was a success what you can you may say that and i, I in my conclusion i said that uh, though chitranjan thought differently than the mainstream otherwise not not in the mainstream way differently though his journey is more important than because then today you are inspired by him tomorrow or somebody is inspired by him and they would take up that cause so it is the journey which becomes very important and that is why i, I remember i told the, the sufi or the or the alder or or uh, bauls they they take a journey they do not talk of the destination they said i don't know where i'll go i don't know i am i am wayfarer they are wayfarers yahan aaj hai to kal wahan hai kabir to wahi kehte hain aap kabir das dekhiye rajab dekhiye this is sab teeth mein pani ek hi hai so uh, uh, i'm forgetting the uh, exact line so this is what is that you set your soul free let it go you learn that is why i quoted buddha who say he tells ananda you have to be your own light you have to be your own island and you will be, be uh, will see that these the jo fakir hain ye jo sufi hain they are their own lights not only their own lights they are the lights even for the society so the spirit of 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 freedom the spirit of to be with nature not to deny the nature today the way we are destroying we are bringing up huge mansions and universities cutting all trees drying up lakes and then and then we are planting a little bit of nice trees inside and saying that oh there is greenery and so uh, so this is you first destroy then and then then you try to uh, uh, It, uh, say that you are creating something <clears throat> doesn't make any sense why do you destroy them at first why don't why can't be uh, i remember the 
चंडीगढ़ चंडीगढ़ और केरला द पर्सन हु इज द आर्किटेक्ट ही वुड फॉरगेटिंग हिज नेम राइट नाउ ही इज वेरी वेरी फेमस ही वुड मेक अ हाउस अराउंड अ कोकोनट ट्री एंड नॉट कट इट ऑफ ही विल से नो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू कट एनी ट्री फ्रॉम हियर बट आई विल मेक अ हाउस फॉर यू विद द रॉ मटेरियल्स अवेलेबल एंड केरला इज फुल आप केरला विजिट कीजिए केरला इज फुल ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ हाउसेस दैट ही मेड एंड ही इज वेरी फेमस इन एन आर्किटेक्ट <coughs> and the landscape but so what we are saying is that we don't revere we don't respect the land we don't respect the uh, the, the, the nature we don't respect each other i don't we don't respect ourselves so we fall for the, the colonial uh, system says okay there what departmentalized this in today is so much of uh, this thing that you the, the, you go to a doctor for a right uh, eye and the left eye for another doctor so much of specialization i we don't need that specialized that kind of specialization so this is the translation how do you translate the freedom the inner freedom and the as well as the freedom in nature they have to be in harmony and that is what so isliye maine kaha aap achhi tarah jante hain jo aap puch rahe hain thank you thank you thank you thank you so much as this i was just reminded about a kashmiri tradition whenever we build a house here it is a mm. tradition that we have to seek forgiveness from the universe and god for yes. displaying those rabbit those uh, insects and uh, uh, rats and all those uh, uh, on which we construct the house that's right. why so sort of sacrificial feast is arranged so that we take we take forgiveness from the universe that we have disturbed this small environment right. this is similar right. tradition in kashmir that is why right. it was Well, well, very you. nice. See, uh, this is the in Atharva Veda is also there. Before you cut a tree, you have to pray first, ask permission, and then promise there that you will have to uh, uh, plant uh, more than double of what you have done. Ask permission from the tree. Yes. So yes. this is yeah. The, so now, uh, our, do our children know? Or uh, they they just uh, no, study? No, they don't. Why? Yeah, they they study in hi-fi uh, autonomous <laughs> schools, go abroad, and they do not know this, and therefore there is no respect. You can't have uh, have expect any reverence. For exactly, your, no uh, land ethic. Yes. Yes. That they, land they ethic. Now we need to learn from those Native Americans and all those that in his that that have yeah. land yeah. ethic is nowhere present. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Very cool, Jig. So. Ah, uh, Anand Jig, Kadar, Kadar, chale gaye. Anand, yes, uh, Professor Giri, are you there? I think he is facing some severe network problem. Uh, so Anand, हो गए. Anand, सर तो Anand ही है. So, so Supriya Singh, I think she raised some question. No, she is uh, talking something about Palo Fry fire. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Palo Friar. She is just giving one comment. Palo Friar mm-hmm. says education is a practical practice of uh, freedom, and mm-hmm. education should be a practice of freedom. But nowadays, education is just killing us, like any no peace and freedom. So, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. so i can also remember one uh, very important thinker krishna murthy uh, yes yes, yes. krishna murthy right. it's a very famous line uh, once he said education is not to pass examinations take yeah. a degree and a job get yes. married and settle down but education is also to be able to listen the words to yeah. see the sky to see the extraordinary beauty of a tree hmm. to see the shapes of hills and feel them yeah, yeah. in 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 that sense i think both uh, tagore and uh, professor das is trying to inculcate that context of imagination hmm. whereby social transformation can be you know done so yeah, yeah actually you, actually krishnamurti has uh, uh, schools is, are here which mm-hmm. is still 10 standard you do not have any examination mm-hmm. and you uh, yeah uh, it's it's uh, i am forgetting the location uh, name 
Uh, so uh, the children are admitted only in the when they are 10th standard that they follow the state exam because uh, without that they cannot get a, uh, entry into colleges etc but till 10th standard from one it is just free and it's a huge campus and children are just uh, uh, free to do anything they like and they learn it with that freedom it's still there mm -hmm. ananta aap kahan chale gaye ah, hello hello namaste ah can you hear me yeah yeah aap yes, kahan chale gaye the nahi i am here on the i'm here and we are together maruf maruf ji puch rahe the maruf shah ji puch rahe the aapko <laughs> main kas kashmir ja raha hu <laughs> so Achha. so thank you professor chakraborty for this insightful lecture i think um, the title of your engagement uh, chitranjan fair Uh, one minute, one minute, Anand. <laughs> What happens was uh, the uh, I had put this as a uh, I thought I'll get some critic. G, uh, GI knows about it, mm -hmm. and I got a lot of uh, letter from the Islamic uh, group saying because I use the word faith, so they thought it is about the Islamic faith that I am mentioning. So a uh, <laughs> lot of lot of followers <laughs> have been reading the. Uh, they not not even knowing who Chitranjan is. I thought it was such a nice joke. I said they just took it for granted that it is. I'm talking about is Islamic faith and all the uh, lot of names on the, uh, this thing. So it is only yeah. Carry on. Sorry. Yes. So faith refigured. So it's a very interesting inquiry, and and faith was a very important concern of uh, Chitaba, and he brought it to a very interesting ontological level. and that is that how faith is a foundation of our life and 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 he contrasted it with an unreflective you know unreflective uh, let us say slave of power that how you know yeah. it is power which uh, you know imprisons us and power wants to put a uh, put it put us inside a closed box but it is faith which can open it up so and that faith also faith in humanity faith in each other and faith in relationships so your reflection on this you know in what way faith is refigured in chitabhai's work thank you uh there were people who read my uh, uh, essay and they were saying that the uh, naturally the sources was well, that i had only quoted your book so you will have to get the oriya sources translated so that we okay. can yeah because otherwise uh, there is no other source which we can go so they were asking what are the other books on uh, i said i do not know oriya so i i cannot uh, tell you about this yes i think it is you can give the job to many who are younger generations and they will and they are who can take translation work and then uh, that can disseminate many on uh, to many other places and people that will be worth doing also hello uh, mama you want to say something about that krishnamurti thing being uh, discussed no uh, no that uh, yeah that uh, in chennai it is there krishnamurti foundation is there ah, but ah. The one issue is with that there are i mean they have very limited seat like 25 students uh, they will take yeah. yes. i mean and that you no know, you cannot get the admission there for, for my son actually we were trying there hmm. so just to give him the freedom of whatever he wants to do so that did not never happen they said no it is up to 10th it is been Uh, it is filled. You cannot take in between classes or first standard things. Yes. I don't know how it can be expanded. As you no, know, everybody whoever wants or interested to get uh, that education, they can get that. So that is what I wanted to tell. No, Minati. I mean, uh, it naturally because uh, it's only a uh, few people. Uh, if it is crowded like other or, or ordinary schools, then it becomes other ordinary. Yeah, school. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so. The therefore, way. they do not want to. Uh, also, in Calcutta, there is this Satyajit Roy school, which is called uh, Patu Bhavan. 
So there also it is the same way, which is uh, you have to sweep your own uh, own classroom. You will have to do all the work, uh, whatever you were doing for the guru earlier, and then you will have to uh, come to your own conclusion by your teaching. The teacher is only there to guide. So that is that's quite a good innovative way of doing. Things. I think Ananta is sleepy, so also. Uh, yeah. Can I read a poetry or me? I mean. this team you know how please, you please. teach differently to the child so can i read the one poetry sorry i'm delaying everyone can i oh, yeah. Oh, yeah 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 yes please yeah yeah that is from my that book actually uh, and you done that is about actually inspired from the schooling system you know some different schooling system and uh, the title is like that my little child and i many days my dishes go on waste many days my dishes go on waste laundry is remain dirty and i don't make my bed i just take his little hand in my palm where his little footsteps lead yeah we explore the outdoor with his uneven steps beneath the sun and sky the the tidy world at that time meant to me my little child and i we saw the clouds we saw the clouds listen to the birds chirp we plucked hibiscus and watched the squirrels creep we talked a lot beyond the word listening and answering to each other at the time for clock i was bothered never it made a valuable gift for us ever that my house and me was so neglected no attention was given the movements of these years no one will know or ever can but i have helped my little one to grow the whole wide world to open its eye him to explore and to live a life now thank you thank you for listening good very nice Beautiful. very thank nice okay. so it's time to offer a vote of thanks so <laughs> minty ji yeah are... today i'm privileged uh, in this auspicious occasion with meera ma'am as a speaker i am means getting the opportunity to offer her vote of thanks so thank you i minati pradhan uh, on the behalf of sudha sahajakra i hello want... hello minati please open yeah. your camera so <laughs> okay okay i'm visible now i think hello ah, yeah. yes you are visible on the behalf of sudha sahajakra i minati pradhan offer uh, my heartfelt gratitude to our chief speaker meera ma'am for two days very enlightening session and uh, answering all the questions so detailed and you no know, means enlighten us with her deep insight so i thank our uh, moderator professor anand kumar giri uh, for every week engaging us with such uh, beautiful themes to learn and explore more i also thank professor gan luigi for his deep insightful remarks opinions and question i also thank professor maruf saha for his uh, as usual uh, for his deep insightful spiritualism and the related questions and uh, enlightening us with his um, remarks and i thank all the uh, participants on that uh, google meet or on the i hope it was live in facebook also so all the facebook uh, audience for joining us in this together in the learning journey and at the last not the least i thank our convener professor randir kumar gautam for arranging all these things so meticulously and taking every detail i mean every minute detail to and executing it and uh, thank you all thank you so much i should thank uh, minati for passing the exam i have passed the exam today according to minati so no i am i am i am i am privileged to learn and gi thank you gi is not visible the light is not there